This is the Nassiman Hockey Podcast with James Nichols and John Zella. How nice was that roof department shootout goal winner by Anthony Bavillier tonight? Woo, baby. I just wish he could do that in the game. Yeah, it's a little bit different in the shootout. Yeah. Um, I love that Butch always calls it, or at least yeah. he tries to. Yeah. Um, but I thought it was interesting in the beginning of the shootout, and obviously we'll get to this because this is the fourth of four games that we're going to talk about for the Islanders. Yeah. Um, I thought it was interesting that the first four shooters, so two for the Islanders and two for the Bruins, were all right-handed shots. I thought that was, um, I don't know why I picked up on that, but I, I thought it was weird. I on that. Until Bavillier shot, it was all right-handed shots. And well, that's I just that was the straw that broke the camel's back, I guess, right? Throw, throw the lefty in there and shake it up. Correlation, I suppose. <laughs> we can we can chalk it up there. That's that's good enough for me. They won, so it works right now, and that's all that matters. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, but let's start off uh, the night with Around the Rink, brought to you by DraftKings. It's that time of year again. Bubble teams are making their final push for a bid, while the top seeds are preparing for what they hope to be a long run in the playoffs. And DraftKings is giving all customers a free shot at up to $100,000 in total prizes. All you have to do is head up to DraftKings and... Uh, make your picks. Download the DraftKings app, head to their free to play pools page, and enter DraftKings free $100,000 tournament seating pool. Free to play pools are easy to play. All you have to do is make your picks for who you think will win and get a ticket into March's biggest tournament. If you have the most answers correct, you win. The bank is open. Download the DraftKings app now and use the promo code THPN to get a free shot at a share of $100,000 in total prizes. With DraftKings Tournament Seeding Pool, that's promo code THPN to get a free shot at $100,000 in prizes only at DraftKings. Eligibility restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com for details. Uh, around the rink, so let's talk a little bit about some news in the NWHL. Isabel Cup will take place. March 26th to the 27th at Warrior Ice Arena in Brighton, Massachusetts, and it will air on NBC Sports. Uh, the hockey community has some members to shout out as well. Uh, it was International Women's Day yesterday uh, or two days ago, uh, as you're hearing this. And we just want to shout out Jen Bottarelli, uh, Shannon Hogan, and AJ Malesko because they've just been superb on the Islanders broadcasts and calling Islander games and, and, and not, not even that sometimes, you know, they, they make appearances on broadcasting, uh, I'm sorry, international levels and everything. And they've just been fantastic. We're really lucky to have uh, three of, in my opinion, the better women uh, uh, calling the game nowadays. So uh, shout out to those three. We're really uh, happy to have them on our, on our side. Yeah. The, the three of them have been just really good, broadcasters they've really made the islanders broadcast very good although i don't think jen botterell has been on this season um she has been on sportsnet right mother broadcast as well yeah. but still really cool and and i i retweeted an article i reshared an article rather that i wrote last year around this time about how the islanders continue to pave the way uh for women in sports media um they've kind of always been on the forefront of that and yeah. i think it's i think it's really cool it's something that it they're they're clearly um they're they're clearly on the right side of things um and and they kind of always have been some reminded me actually of um of something the other day of Barbara Williams and if you don't know who that is it was a power skating coach um in the in the right. 80s i don't know if she was in the 70s but she was a power skating coach the first woman power skating coach in the NHL and happened to be uh, part of the Islanders uh, organization. So right. another another cool thing there and, and just kind of paving the way the organizations again on the, on the forefront of just doing doing the right thing. And I don't think it's just uh, I, I wouldn't categorize th this team as uh, the, the team of broadcasters that is as being some of the best of women in hockey. It's some of the best broadcasters, some of the, yeah. some of the best in in the business. So um, Really cool, really important, and uh, happy International Women's Day! If uh, you know, a couple days late because we record on Tuesdays. <laughs> yeah, so we're we're late anyway. But uh, by the time you're listening to this, it'll be <laughs> two days away. But happy not International Women's Day uh, to everybody! Yeah, absolutely. 
Uh, let's talk a little bit about the NHL news. Some uh, some news trickled out today. Sportsnet Chris Johnston reported on Tuesday that the NHL and ESPN reached a seven-year deal on one half of the TV rights of the United States. Uh, so ESPN and the NHL are now uh, in agreement, and there's going to be a partnership there. I don't know um, that it's an official. I think there were like murmurs, so I don't want to get too too excited. But that usually it it probably is pointed in that direction. So that was my fault for writing that in. Uh, <laughs> it, was it just murmurs? I the the report was from the score. Um, I, I I guess sometimes they're 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 a little. 50 I don't think it's right. official. I, we would have seen something from the NHL. Yeah. I think so. This is just this is reporting. Yeah. Uh, but the financial details are not clear yet. Um, so I guess keep an eye and an ear out on uh, what's to come with ESPN because uh, it sounds like things are getting close. Uh, Tom Wilson suspended seven games for uh, a high check on uh, – who, who was the high check on? I forget who it was against. Is it Frederick? Uh, oh, I think it was against the Bruins and, and Frederick, right? Yeah, that, that sounds yeah. right, but uh, someone will tweet us and let us know we're wrong. I thought it was uh, – it was definitely a bad hit, and and I thought it was a you know, really poor uh, uh, job on the referees in that game, right? Because you know he he throws the hit up high, um, no call. Um, but that happens. It I, does. I, it I mean, does. J- just like tonight, right? It's Wallstrom's um, high hit or from behind or whatever you want to call it, right, wrong, or indifferent, isn't called until after Marchand jumps in. That's no true. one's arm is up. Yeah. And that's where I don't understand the order of things. Yeah, I don't understand why, why they only call the first penalty when there's a retaliation. Right now, this you know, in this case, it's it's kind of that, but I don't, I never quite understand how that works. Um, and that yeah. hit from that that Wilson threw, people are people are saying, oh, only he, you know, he's only getting suspended seven games because he's Tom Wilson on the Capitals. Um, although the repeat offender thing apparently does just go poof after a certain amount of time, which is nonsense. Um, it's like a probation thing. Be good for I don't, X amount of I time. don't know. I, I, I meant to look into it before the show and I, I just I didn't because it was gonna aggravate me. Um, but it apparently <laughs> just goes away. Um and there, you know, there are arguments about um if it was the the head was the principal point of contact, and I, I I really wish that wasn't part of it. If the head is being contacted, that you're trying to get these head hits out of the game, just get them out of the game. But just yeah. police, police it and suspend it out of the game so that their people aren't making these hits. It's going to happen here and there when a like, Wallstrom tonight player falls awkwardly into the boards. Wallstrom's already kind of going in for the hit. Yeah. It, w- it was kind of on the numbers. He he should have been letting up anyway and making sure he turned. Right. Maybe well, and that's, 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 that's but that's what happened, right? So let's we could talk about that for a second because it kind of relates to the Wilson hit. You know, uh, I think it was against Fre- Frederick too. It might have been Frederick. I uh, honestly can't uh, remember. You know, he he's going to play the puck against the boards, and, and Wallstrom wasn't really going for the hit, right? He just. He's gonna going to body him off the puck. He was just right. He's going to give him a little nudge. Although and... Wallstrom does play with a little bit of an edge, sure, and that's not a bad thing for the Islanders on, on absolutely their line. Absolutely. So I don't know that, or maybe he was going for that. I, I don't know. But my, the the point is, before he made contact, but he had he already committed to the hit. But before he made contact, Frederick lost an edge, and that's what made it look worse than it actually was. Because he went, he started to go down already, and Walsh was turned. already committed, right? So, but the difference here is Tom Wilson just came up, just uh, he came in with with a real dirty hit. I mean, there was it didn't look like there was any intent to hold back or anything like that, um, you know. And like I was saying before, there was no call. And what makes it, what makes that worse is that he's still in the game now. There was no, there was no penalty. Usually, you know, those are five minute penalties could be 10, 10 minute misconducts. Um, and then they're out of the game, but now he gets into two fights after and, and you know, yes, he threw the hit and, you know, unfortunately somebody could have gotten hurt, but you don't want two guys getting hurt. And now he's in the, he's staying in the game. Other, other guys are coming after him. Now they're fighting. I, I don't know. Just a bad, bad job all around in that game. Um, I don't, and, I don't like it. 
I NHL don't... player, right? NHL player safety takes a look at it after the game and says, "Okay, this is worthy of of a suspension." And, and you know, I guess it makes sense that they gave him the suspension, even though there was no penalty, um, because he has that's to stop. Both, that happens quite often, right? Where, they, and, where there's no penalty on the play, but there's supplemental action. Yeah, and I think that's good. It's better than absolutely nothing being done. But I, I, I don't know why the why there's such a disconnect, and maybe that's the problem that that ultimately my issue there's a disconnect between what the refs think is the penalty right and what the league thinks is suspendable why those things aren't mutually exclusive to a degree right the penalty there could be a penalty on the play and there be a suspension there shouldn't be a suspension with no penalty that doesn't make any sense to me there could yeah, be a I... penalty with no suspension that's fine it could be a five minute boarding five ten in a game or you know whatever they can they can figure that out but um, which I suppose is a one game suspension. But, you know, I, I don't I don't like that. There's that disconnect there. And it's not about that. It, it the head was the second point of contact or even the third point of con it was he got a real good piece of that guy's head. Yeah. And that's kind of that's the problem. You, 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 you targeted the head or at least he hit the head. Doesn't really matter if he targeted or not. That's what happened. Um, so it just in. Somewhat on it's, it's a little surprising because he's cleaned up his game quite a bit. It's he's not really been in the headlines That's in that true. regard in a while. Um, but you know, just like Marshan up to just different antics and whatever's going on, yeah, eventually he's gonna get caught. Yeah, absolutely. So seven games for Tom Wilson. Um, and you know, we'll see how it goes for him when he gets back. Sure, I'm sure it won't be his last. I don't know. What do you think? You think you think he'll take another? Oh, long? <laughs> I don't. I I don't know. I mean, he he's also a really big guy that plays yeah. with the edge. Yeah, that um is offensively minded. Like he could just lay a hit, and it could someone could turn at the last second, or somebody right. could. Uh, it's it's all these reactionary plays, and I I kind of remember doing this. Uh, you know, and I luckily, you know, and I never really got hurt and, and neither did anybody else. But, you know, when someone someone beats you, they got around you, you were going for the hit. They, you know, what does Butch say? Deacon and a diving. They, they kind of go, <laughs> they, they go one way and you thought they were going to go the other way and you miss the hit and you stick your knee out a little bit yeah. you're, you're, or your leg. You're, you're just frustrated in, in the moment. And, you know, you, you you don't really do it that often. It's not something that happens all the time. At least it shouldn't be happening right. all the time. So you know, it could be one of those plays. He could just get beat and and stick out a knee, and and that's a you know that's something else, or just catches somebody in, in the wrong spot, and it's and it's a head hit. I mean, he's he's a very big, he's a very tall individual. So I don't know. I, hopefully, he cleans his game up. I'm I don't like to see that, and I hope that the guy's okay. I don't think it was Frederick because I don't think he should have been playing in this game. I, I can't remember what the or at least maybe he wasn't playing in this game. I can't remember, um, but. At least Wilson will not be in the lineup against the Islanders the next time that they play this yeah, month. It's very so true. There, there's some si silver lining there, I, I guess. Yeah, and you know the point of all of this, you know, cleaning the game up is to really just make sure that there's no long-lasting effects on uh, players. You know, after they're done playing the game and they can move on from playing the game and live these healthy lives. Um, and that's a contributing factor actually to what we want to talk to you about right now. Before we get to on the Island, uh, we want to talk to you about a new show coming to the hockey podcast network called we're all a little crazy with hosts, Theo Flory, Darren Rovell and Eric Cusen. Yes, you heard that right. Former NHLer Theo Flory, uh, will be part of the hockey podcast network with, we are all a little crazy. Uh, the podcast is about mental health, uh, sports, society, experiences, and education. So without further ado, enjoy this little promo that we have here for you right now. Now a show that's going to give you the truth about the biggest epidemic of our times. We're all a little crazy. We're all a little crazy is brought to you by the Same Here Global Mental Health Movement and the Hockey Podcast Network. Available on all podcast apps. Do us a favor and download each episode before you listen. And if you're an Apple user, please rate and review the podcast as it helps us get these important conversations 
out to reach a larger audience. Really cool stuff there. Excited to have guys like Theo, Darren, and Eric coming on the network. Um, you know, it's going to be, I think it's going to be great. I, it's it's definitely important. And Emily Kaplan actually had an article out today that um, the podcast is part of this same here global um, movement. Um, you can follow them at same here underscore global on Twitter. Um, and they so they shared the article and it was about how Emily, Emily Kaplan wrote this article about how COVID and, and the pandemic and, and going through the league right now and playing in the NHL is taking a little bit of a toll on NHLers. Yeah. Um, and, and probably just pro hockey players is probably brutal in the AHL right now. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, so it, it's it's definitely pertinent. It's something that's been bubbling up um, more and more over the last few years. Um, the, the different issues within the NHL. Um off the ice so right. really really excited um happy that the hockey podcast network is kind of taking taking this on and, and taking this issue on and, and brought all this in and super cool to be sharing a network with theo flurry yeah um even even in name only even if it's just uh oh yeah i'm on a network with uh with theo no yeah, big deal. not a big um, deal so yeah no it, it's it's great um Proud to be part of this. We've, we've, um, this might be our one month anniversary. One month anniversary. One month anniversary. I think you're right. This might be our one month anniversary. Happy one month anniversary, Hockey Podcast Network. Happy to be part of all this and promoting a great show. Um, (laughs) yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, let's check out to On the Island and let's talk about the week that was. Uh, we sweep Buffalo. We go 5-0 and this week, uh, Penguins, New Jersey, and then the Buffalo Sabres three times. You said 5-0, and and I really had to think about that it, there were five games in the week. And that it was five. Crazy. Sunday, Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, Sunday. Sunday to Sunday, and they go 5-0. and um, And look, yes, New Jersey and Buffalo – is not the hardest schedule, especially when you play in Buffalo three times. But the thing is, and I, and I tweeted this and, you know, some people had comments on, on the schedule. Listen, elite teams get the job done and they did exactly what they were supposed to do. It's not like the Sabres don't have Jack Eichel, Taylor Hall, Sam Reinhart, Rasmus Ristolainen, et cetera. They have good pieces and they could squeak out wins. They're they're not the best coached. They're not structured the best. And and it, it's it's sad to see it, what's going on in Buffalo, but they are still an NHL hockey team. They're still they still have pieces that on that team that have and and know how to be successful in this league. So you know the Islanders secured the the, the points because they had a job to do and they they executed. And that's what's called being an elite hockey team. They had a job and they got it done. I, th- I mean, people could say what they what they want about the division and and how many games they won against the Sabers and whatever. The Islanders can only play who the schedule is telling them to play exactly. When. So they had three games against the Sabers. They've played them six times. They've won those games. They've also beaten the Bruins four times now. Right. So. For now that's four worth, times because right four times for whatever right. that's worth, and it, it's just it's just the way that it is right now. It, exactly. In in any season, the the schedule changes. You you play harder teams. You go on West Coast trips. You're not playing. It doesn't matter. This year, this is all. You can only judge them based on who they're able to play. It's in the division. It's just what it is. Right, and, and, I, and I hate that saying, but it really is this. But it is because this is these are the cards that they were dealt. This is the schedule that they got, and granted, they weren't supposed to play Buffalo three times in a row this week. But the schedules changed because of COVID reasons, and and they, I think they had a a, a full, they had a week off right and, and towards the beginning of the year because their opponents. I think it, it might have been the Sabers. They they had uh they had games scheduled against the Sabers. It was, they are the was, ones that had the, happened to have games canceled. Right. And and things got moved around, but so every team is going to have that opportunity, every team. and everyone's um, going through this. And I, and I think what's interesting is you know, so the Isle, if the Islanders lose, they're a shitty team. Oh, that's but if they 100%. win, it's hundred percent. Well, it's the Sabers, okay, right? Okay, that, whatever. And then I'm not really hearing any shit when Boston loses to New Jersey, right? And now this is their second 
you know, they're all one and one, but their second loss in a row, right? No, no wins anyway. Um, you know, and no one's giving them shit, right? You know, I think I, the Islanders have six points in hand on them now. I, I, I think I didn't look at it. I, we went, I went from uh, my TV to my computer and didn't, didn't look at the standings. And, I'm at, and I'm like right. That. Six points in hand. Granted, six they have, point, how many games more they have, have they, they have three games in hand? The, I mean, the, and the, that's, the I, I think, and I've said this on other shows, I don't mind that the Islanders, this is, and this is the first time this has happened that I can remember that the Islanders actually have played more games right. and won those games. It's they're they're usually like, oh, they played three more games and they lost two of them. Right. So they lost the advantage. At least now, A, they're banked, and B, it's on other teams that they now play later in the month. Right. It's on it's incumbent upon them to make up the point. So not only is now is Boston now behind the Islanders in in points and in games played, but the Islanders right. have also beat them. So then the boss four it's, times Boston now is playing this catch up mode mm-hmm. for half a season to just make the playoffs because yeah. you know and I that top five in the division is already tough to begin with. Uh, that's what I'm saying. And but the uh, the Islanders right are separating themselves, and now it's a mush in those other four teams. So if the Islanders can knock other teams down, New Jersey gets a the you know a rogue win and they beat Boston. If they can. If if the Rangers who also didn't win ten against Pittsburgh, that would have been nice. There was no yeah. help tonight. <laughs> no help tonight. But you know, the Islanders didn't hurt. Usually, what happens is they lose they, to a team like yeah. Boston, who make up ground. Pittsburgh wins. Phil- Philadelphia wins, and it, yeah, it's screwed. Yeah. I didn't see if Washington also won, part but. of the evolution of this team. Yeah, I mean they're finally not getting in their own way, and I, you know, obviously, um, what's the saying? Uh, they're controlling their own destiny. That's, That's not it. a thing because you now. can't well, you can't control your destiny. <laughs> That's why it's destiny. PS. <laughs> if you could control it, it would just I don't know what it'd be called. It would just be your future, I guess. I yeah, that... <laughs> um self-fulfilling prophecies or something like that, some fancy saying. So it, for the first time, the islanders really are controlling what you know if they lose a game, they know they banked the points. Right. Um, very similar to kind of Toronto in, in the North Division, where, um, yeah, they, they've beaten the teams and they're the best team. Uh, there's right. nothing they can do. They're, these are the teams that are, they're able to play. It's not up to them who they play. This is just the, you know, the hand that they're dealt, like you said. And th- they're making the point. So they lose, I think they lost actually to Vancouver twice over the weekend and uh, at least Friday and Sunday, something like that. Over the last few days, they lost twice to Vancouver. And you know what? It's not time to burn down the roster and make all these changes. You know, the same thing. I would say that the 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 Islanders might lose two games in a row. It's not time to blow things up and call for right. trades and all this crazy stuff. They bank the points. They need to beat the teams that are trying to chase them. At least steal a point from them. Right. You know, they have enough regulation wins at this point where they can they can start here and there. Just play the three point games, collect the points, even if you lose. Uh, make it harder for them, uh, so you know tiebreakers and and whatnot. Because quote home ice advantage will still be good because they're re- yeah. playing very well at home. They've still yet to lose in regulation. Ten zero and two is ten or now is eleven. Ten, uh, I believe it's ten. Ten zero and two in at home at Nassau Coliseum. Fort never lose. Fort never lose. This the nope. You're right. Eleven zero and two. Yeah, I, say, I feel like I saw that earlier today, and now it's eleven. It's so yeah, the the last Fort Never Lose, the last stand. Um, that's a free shirt idea for somebody. Hmm. Uh, actually, that's a not a bad shirt idea. <laughs> oh boy, trademark, trademark, trademark. Nobody trademark, do trademark. this. No it's one do ours. this. Yeah, we're gonna do it overnight. So uh, future. By, by the time you're listening to us in the future, yeah, we've already done it. So don't even try. Uh, but in, in, you know, talking about the the rankings and everything, just reminded me a couple days ago. I tweeted out the power rankings presented by uh, NHL uh, on NBC, right? And the Islanders were in the top 10. Um, they fell. Well, they didn't fall. They actually rose, but they they placed sixth. Um, and it sparked a lot of debate in my mentions just because, you know, again, I, I didn't make this list. I just tweeted it out. You know, I saw it. And um, no, James, you're responsible for what NBC tweeted. <laughs> Well, I mean, listen. I would have people, you believe that. 
some people don't read past you know what they what they see right in front of them but um islanders play sixth um and it, it sparked debate like i said you know you had the golden knights first the lightning second the maple leafs third the hurricanes fourth the panthers fifth then the islanders capitals bruins avalanche and blues and a, what a lot of people were saying um and I, it's it's a pretty decent argument i i wouldn't say that it's totally uh irrelevant but a lot of people were saying, isn't the East division the hardest division and the Islanders are at the top of it? So wouldn't that make them the top team? It's really hard to say right now who the top team in the league is because everybody's playing the same team over and over and over again. Is it the toughest division? Yes. Are the Panthers benefiting from a weaker division? Maybe. I mean, they're also playing. They're well. also playing. Dredger Dred is also playing out of his mind. Out of his mind. There's a there's a rivalry between Tampa and Florida now, which has never happened before. So that's awesome. Um, but it, again, it, it's a decent argument that maybe they should be a little bit higher because they're in the toughest division, and they're you know maybe if they played some teams in the Atlantic or out west, that would or you know up north, it would be it would look a little different, and that's probably true. Um, but you know. Do you do you personally put much stock in in the power rankings? Because no. the, the fourth period had them third, okay. third, or f- third or fourth. Isn't that what you sent today? It, yeah, it's so in subjective. The, in the chat. I, I I I don't think about it too much. Me neither. It, it doesn't it doesn't really mean anything. No, I I tend to just go right to the the explanation for because because of what we do and because we write for the hockey writers and. And we do this. I know we both try to stay somewhat objective. Yeah. Right. Like we're 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 trying to be. Obviously, I'm yelling on my couch and being an absolute lunatic. But and you know, in the group chat, we all yell about stuff, and that's fine. But you you yell. The, the yeah I, yeah. I'm well. Yeah, I'm the old man <laughs> of the group. By, yeah, by like five months. Um. You know, I don't. I go to the explanation because I think that's what's important. And they, they usually point in a, in a pretty good direction, yeah. whether they're 16th or 28th or third, it doesn't really matter. You know, the goaltending's weak and the power plays this, and, and this is what's contributing. It's that's usually what I put the, and if, if anything from that stuff, because that's the actual analysis where they rank them. It's just writers in a room. Like exactly. not that they're not that I'm putting us anywhere close to, you know, uh, NBC analysts and former players and, and all this stuff. But um, I, I want to see the actual analysis. I don't really care where because especially, yeah, you're, you're hundred percent right this year in particular, it's impossible, it's impossible. To, te- to tell the difference uh, who who's in what. And I kind of asked this question a couple weeks ago, right? Can mm-hmm. we even tell who the top no. scorer in the league is, or it, it's, I don't know how you compare it's different leagues right now. They're just like isolated, different NHLs kind yeah. of happening. Um, I don't know. I don't know how you compare any of that. It's kind of like until the second round of the playoffs. Yeah. I don't, I don't know what we're really going to know about any of these teams because for the first yeah. time in six months, they're going to be playing a different team than they have before. Possibly. Yeah. I have to look, we really need to look at how that's going to work in the playoffs. I really don't know. Um, but either way, in the playoffs, they will wind up playing a different team if they make it past, uh, presumably, the first round. And it's going to be wild. It's going to be really yeah. difficult. They're going to have to watch tape for the first time all season, uh, re- really dive in. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be a lot of strategy. The coaches are really going to be um, worth their salt in, in going into the playoffs this year. So Yeah, not to get into too much more detail about how the playoffs are going to work, but it's really going to be more of a mental grind than a physical grind. I'm I, I shouldn't say that, but there's going to be a bigger mental aspect to it this year than any other year ever because th- it's going to be the first time in over a year that you're playing a different team. So, yeah, no, it'll 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 be interesting to watch, and I'm kind of excited for that. I mean, fingers crossed. Islanders are in good position halfway through the season. Yeah. Um, we've seen worse collapses before, so from not even just from the Islanders in general, I don't suspect that will happen. Um, yeah. this, this next, um, March is make or break for this team. You did write about that. And I, and I think just because they, they play the flyers three times that alone 
is the important part of this month. It is important. We'll know following that what this really looks like. It is important, but the thing about the Flyers and the thing about the rest of this division that I said at the beginning of this season is that nobody is overly impressing me. And I, as unbiased as I could try to make this sound, I am impressed with the Islanders recently. Nine-game point streak, six in a row, 4-0 and against Boston. Philadelphia is not playing good hockey right now. And uh, the, uh, hopefully the Islanders can catch them. Exactly. Here's, here's where I where I stand on some things. I would have rather the Islanders back when they played, they lost both those games in Washington and in Philadelphia. I would have rather them at least get a point or win one game out of that, split those little mini series, and then lose a game or two against Buffalo. I would rather known that they can beat them. And a cleaner record because they they are zero and two against the Flyers and Washington. It's it's and I don't I don't like that idea. I mean, it, okay, I, they're, they're, I honestly feel like we're talking about two different teams right now. We're talking about the team who, when they did drop those games, still trying to figure it out. Right? There was no. I mean, it was we, definitely we, a rough point. It was a rough start. This was no was, Bavillier. No Bavillier. No. No exhibition games, short camp. They were still trying to figure it out. They've hit their stride, and it, they're in midseason form now. Yeah, I mean, I don't, it, it technically is midseason, but yeah, they're no, we're, they're in this it. this week. Right, will be the middle of the season. I I just I want to see them um, continue that consistency. I think my issue with them is, and again, this is after five wins in a row and blah blah blah. Six, Six games in a row, not a big deal. <laughs> um you know, I think the the best part of the 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 three game set with the the Sabres is they really only played maybe a bad period and a half. And and that's the consistency we I was talking about last week. That was the part that can be the downfall because the Islanders played pretty well against Boston tonight. The whole a full 60 minutes they didn't play fantastic, but they didn't have any letdowns. You know, there was chances that went either way, and that happens. That's a hockey game. Right. But that's – if they lost this game, I would not have been – I would have been angry because they lost, but not by how they lost. And yeah. that's And that's where I don't mind that, that this is fine. The fact that it went to a shootout, it was a 1-1 draw, fine. I'm, I'm, I'm perfectly fine with that. Like I said, even if they lose in a shootout. Even if they lost in overtime, yeah, because they played consistently over the last four or five games. Eh, maybe the New Jersey game was kind of iffy. I feel like they played down to New Jersey a little bit. I think you mentioned that last week. They're they're playing down to, to some op- opponents at times, but they uh, didn't do that, and they just turned it on yeah. against Buffalo. And that's the consistency, right? Like we just need to see the Islanders playing their best, even if they yeah. don't win. Yeah. Losing doesn't mean they didn't play a good game. We, we mm-hmm. really need to recognize that. So now there's some momentum. They have a streak. They still have a few more games at home. So oh, pretty yeah. long homestand. I think it's um, four, four more. Yeah, wh- which I think is good mentally. They get to you know be at home, see yeah. their families, um, and then kind of ramp up for the second half of the season and, and, the, and the stretch run. Um, I, but I'm like I said, I'm, I think I'm the happiest th- by the fact and I'm um, the outlook is good because they're playing consistently. I haven't seen them really, again, outside of a period and a half, maybe against the Sabres, they played just really well. Yeah. Let's talk about who's probably playing arguably the best for the Islanders right now. And that goal. The, the goal. goal. <laughs> the possible goal of the year, which I find I find it hard to believe anyone's going to top it. It was very impressive. If anybody top, if anybody tops this goal, it's got to be, I don't know, fly, they have to score while flying through the air. Matt Barzell, it's got to be a between the legs, Michigan. It, yeah, something that's or a like good some one. lacrosse move or some yeah, stuff. some some seven twenty kick flip Tony Hawk edition goal because that goal. First of all, he flips the puck up, gets it off of, uh, gets it away from Mr. Line and stick. Out muscles a 30 pound difference 
and he's losing that 30 pound difference. He out muscles the 30 pound difference, gets in on the inside of Ristolainen, moves Hutton out of position, puts it between his legs, and scores the first goal of the game. That was the the best goal he's ever scored since playing in the NHL. Um, that has to be the goal of the year, if no other goals wow anybody by the end of the year. I, I mean, I don't know. Argue There were a couple of good goals last week. I think uh, Adam Fox with the Rangers had a nice coast-to-coast one, and, and Evgeny Malkin had a nice goal as well. But that one took the cake, and, and it took the cake for, for any – Really nice goal that happened this year. It, it was just you're really seeing this kid evolve, man. You're really seeing him evolve. I'll touch on the the second part. Yes, we're seeing him evolve. We're seeing him make less mistakes. Um, he he's playing a more complete game. He's blocking shots. He's great on the back check. Some lackadaisical play here and there, but yeah. I, I, Upwards of you know ninety percent, he he's playing a complete game, and and that's great. That's the Barry Trotz yeah. effect on your star player. Yeah, especially um, over this six game stretch too, he's been really strong. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I think again, that's good for momentum, building that consistency, knowing what you have to do night in night out. And just as a team, I, I think they're just all playing well together. You see them, uh, you know, Barzell, Lee, and Everly on the bench. They're they're laughing. They're 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 in good spirits. They're 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 best friends. They love each other, and that's what you want to see in the team. As far as the goal, quote the goal, um, I really haven't seen those types of goals on purpose. I've seen it where like it's kind of like a last minute thing, and they're at the side of the net, and they're tr- they're trying to find the right angle. This seems like really intentional. Like he kind of knew he's like, this is a possibility. I'm doing this when I get there <laughs> and or he read the goalie or whatever the case is. You normally don't see that, right? It, it's normally, like I said, it's uh, or at least from the, these between the leg shots where unless it was like Malik um, and uh, if you're if you're too young, you won't know what that is. Uh, that shootout goal from the Rangers. I think that was like 2004. Seven something that sounds right. Uh, an O, an O number, an O something before 2010. <laughs> so some of you might not remember. We're getting really far away from that. It's painful. But I, I, usually, outside of that, I feel like it's usually like they're standing still, side of the net. Not that it takes anything away from them. I think he did, was it Joe Pavelski. Someone had a, word, a ridiculous between the leg shot from like the slot. Um, I don't remember, but uh, I love that this was like. Full speed, he beats out wrist line, and the whole yeah. sequence is the is the goal, right? It's not just the ending, which is fantastic. It was from the red line in. He had there was a battle. It was one on one somehow on a five on five even strength play. It was a one on one battle from the red line in. Yeah, and then he pulls it off from like the dot to the net, which is crazy. Yeah, absolutely. And, and actually, this isn't the first time that Barzell scored a goal between the legs, right? He last year against the Florida Panthers in the bubble, actually, uh, a puck caromed off the uh, the end boards and uh, around the net, found him in front of the net. But he was like a little out of position. He put it between the legs and and scored. And that, so. that's what I mean. It's I feel like it's usually something like that. Yeah. As opposed yeah, yeah. to like at game speed, like right. full out, like still have to make, which a makes this like, one like, so much nicer, right? This, it exactly, makes this one exactly. so much better. The puck, he won the puck battle, the move, the, the, the fake. It was just, it was just a beautiful goal. I expect it to be the goal of the year. Um, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll see what happens, but it'll, it'll be nice to see an ion, an Islander goal of the, an Islander involved in the goal of the year. Yeah. It's not a goal against. And you know what too? <laughs> That's that's true, and, and on the flip side, tonight Varlamov probably has a candidate for himself to have save of the year. He he saved a uh, a shot uh, on the power play or on the penalty kill for the Islanders uh, with he stopped it with a stick. And I know uh, Corpus Salo also tonight did did it for the the Blue Jackets, and it, it probably was a little nicer than Varlamov's, but. Valamov did it as well. You know, he he made a save. There was a rebound, and he just stuck his stick out, and he made another save. So, uh, good things happening for the Islanders, am I right? Uh, including five players on the team currently right now with nine or more goals. 
Lee with 12, Barzell with 9, Eberle with 9, Peugeot with 9, and tonight Brock Nelson scores his 10th of the season. I think that's three straight games for him. Uh, so that's And they're the only team in the NHL to have that many players uh, with nine or more goals. And, and they were all, the, they were the only team before Nelson got his ninth with four. So they're doing really well with, you know, spreading the wealth, everyone scoring, contributing. And the, the thing that I love too is right. Lee Barzell and Everlay, the first line, they're all scoring, but then you have Peugeot and Nelson who are on two different lines as well. That means the third line scoring, the second line is scoring and the fourth line is contributing somehow every night. They're they're really looking like themselves again, and it's looking great. Uh, I know you know we talked about earlier in the year. Is this Clutterbuck's last year? I don't know. Something's missing. Suddenly, you know, in 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 the recent games, he's looked really good. He looked good again tonight. He was really he looked fast. Great tonight. He looked really good. His hands uh, are back. Yeah, like he, hand, he's mm-hmm. he's got a little bit of a swagger. His hands are back. It's definitely the clutter buck that we. Yeah, they haven't mentioned realize. this, but maybe he's got feeling back in that part of his hand that he didn't have feeling in. I don't. I don't know. I mean, or he's gotten used to it. He might just be feeling good. I mean, I I just not being on the road. The team is really gelling. You'd be surprised what the energy will do. Yeah. Um. Like I said, they're spending a little bit more time at home as of late. Um, all that can kind of be playing, playing a factor. And you know, once you start scoring a few goals, he scored a beauty. Yeah, the other that, day. that backhand roofer. That ba- like, you, it's you get a little, a little bit of positive energy. You, you'd be amazed at what that'll do for your confidence. Yeah. And then, um, but when the the line's playing well, um, yeah, I mean, he, I don't think they've he's really played that well. Even even last year, I mean, he was injured and this and whatever, but um, it's the best we've seen him play in a while. Yeah, and the the team needs it. And you wrote in our it was published today, right? A balance scoring. Yep. Um, so I mean these these five guys, and then plus just up and down the lineup, you you can add in the Sizikas and Martin and Wallstrom and uh, you know. Th- Bavillier is coming on slow, but he's looking good. His speed is back. His hands are Absolutely. back. He's you know got to finish. That's going to take some time. He's not played all that much yet. Um, you know, for the first time, we're really seeing balance scoring up front. Yeah, and this is you know, and and the others are still scoring at a at a higher clip than what we're used to with them anyway. And this is with the defense. That's you know, Letty's got a lot of assists, but he's got one goal, I believe. Dobson yeah. has two goals. I think Mayfield has two. Right, and then so Pulak that's... doesn't have anything, and I don't think Green has a goal either. And yeah, but Pulak, who was on, you know, had a was on pace for a career year last year with points. Yeah, he is, was is slow, you know, and he's yeah. scored nine, ten goals a season. No, it's you know, there's a lot of season left, but yeah, less likely I, he'll he'll kind of hit that mark again. I, I think the thing here is right. You know, we we both agree defense needs to add uh, to the offensive punch a little bit. Um, my thoughts on it, though, personally, like you said, you know, Dobson and Mayfield have two goals. Everyone else has less. Um, but I'm, not, I'm not super concerned about it because they're still playing well uh, as a whole. Letty's having himself a nice season with 16 points. Pulak, despite not having scored, is getting opportunities and he's he's helping create good chances. Um, God, I hit the net. It, well, that's the thing. He just has to learn how to hit the net. But I have a feeling once he does, it could come in bunches. So. You know, we'll see how how that goes for him. Um, but I, I I don't mind how they're playing right now. I really don't. I you know, a couple of times tonight was really impressed with you know Dobson finding a lane to throw the puck on net. A couple of times he saw Letty out in front on top of the crease, and he almost uh, you know it was almost an assist on on yet another goal from Anders Lee. It's so funny how crease. we watch these games because I. I saw a bunch of what I noticed from this game about Dobson is that he keeps hitting these forwards in the shin pads that he can't get the puck <laughs> that he can't get the you know puck what, through. Though? Every time I'm looking, I get the puck yeah. to the point. I'm like, kid, just throw it deep. It's not You're just not, him. I know. I just it's a every, lot of them. Every time that look, it, he's great at exits. Oh defensive yeah, defensive zone exits. Yeah, he can move the puck through the neutral zone. He's really good in the offensive zone, but I feel like he gets the puck uh, on a, on a stick at the point, and I feel like, yep, it's gonna hit. 
It's going to hit a defender. It's going to hit, the, you know, yeah. like can't find, the, you know, for, for Pulak can't find the net. He can't even get it near the net. <laughs> um, and yeah, he's, gonna... he gets a lot of, he gets a lot of good looks. He just has to, he has to just get that puck deep at a certain point. Like, yeah, I, he's got, there's a slightly better decision making. I say that from my couch, but it's slightly better decision making and just trying to get the puck deep and, and recognizing, okay, there's too much traffic. This guy's cutting down the angle. I don't have, I don't have a shot yeah. uh, at getting the puck through. I got to just get it deep. And I, I, you need to recognize that a little bit sooner and, and he'll get there. Right. The thing for me is, you know, they were also playing Boston and they're one of the best defensive teams right now in our, our division. I'm not even going to say the league anymore because we're just playing in a, in a smaller league right now. But, um, they're one of the better defensive teams in the division and they, they know how to block lanes. They know how to block shots. Um, you know, so against, against the, the, the Bruins, you might've noticed it a little bit more. Um, but you're, you know, you're right. Absolutely. You're right. I just noticed also the couple of good things that he did where, where he did find those lanes and he did, you know, it was one shift, two consecutive shots where he threw the puck on net Lee, you know, the lead tip went wide and he got it back and he did it again. Um, He's been he's been great on the pinches. He's yeah. able to kind of corral that puck in really tight spaces on the offensive blue line. Um, he, he's been great in the neutral zone. Yeah. I'm I'm very I think what I want and I work going all over the place. I'm sorry. The um, what I'm really most impressed with the Islanders, and it seems like a really small thing. And maybe it's because I coached. I love their regroups. They're so crisp yeah they're they're finding ways to make sure that they can they continue to and what my my coaches say is own the puck yeah so you got possession don't don't just give it away i understand ship and chase and getting a change and all that kind of stuff but they're finding ways yep. to to keep their head up either move the puck forward or move it back to their d and they're supporting each other yeah. you see that and there, there were a few different plays and, and dobson i think is a big part of that they kind of tie that in you know, he's making those good outlet passes after receiving that and, and, and kind of, you know, um, getting away from an oncoming four check or whatever the case is, or making a quick up to a player if there's honors haven't made a change. Um, it's just very, it's not a small part of the game, but if you're, you know, no. not used to calling, you know, seeing a neutral zone regroup or kind of going through practice and things like that, yeah. it's one of those things where I, I've noticed, and tonight was really crisp. Like I, I, yeah, extra paying attention to it after I saw it a couple times. So. Right, no, 100%. Dobson's really good at zone entries. Letty's really good at zone entries. Barzell, Eberle, Bovillier, they're all really good at getting the puck in the zone, um, not just chipping and chasing, but carrying it in, you know, circling back if they need to, getting everybody set up. Uh, they they have gotten a, much better at that because there were a couple of seasons where it was just maddening watching them continue to chip and chase the puck, never or get lose it back. The puck. They're, they're trying to do just D to D passes and yeah. simple stuff, and they couldn't even – do these 15 foot passes to each other. And yeah, um, even during that five game stretch uh, yeah. earlier in the season, you just, you, they could not make right. these passes to one another. But it, was, it was ridiculous. We're living in very different times now. It's the Barry Trotz era. And I, I can't help but smile every time I say that, you know, it's like, it's like you ever, you ever see that video of Paul Rudd where he's like, look at us. Who yes. would have thought? Look, not me. <laughs> it's just, yeah, I love it. It's, it's I, we, we have to pinch ourselves every once in a while. And every this once was in a while. this was his seventeen hundredth game. Seventeen hundredth game, yeah. And and what a way to and win. A, and a victory, which is fantastic. So yeah. he keeps racking up, uh, racking up the wins. Although Quenville's making it a little harder for him to catch. Yeah, uh, <laughs> because Florida's doing a heck of a job in that division. I'll tell you what, though, I I, I feel like if this you know. He's going to coach for a, a, a much longer time, in my opinion. He's what in his fifties still. Trots. I'm so bad at age. People I think in a room. He I is. can't tell how many people are in a room or how old they are. And th if I'm not mistaken, this is your three of five on his deal. Yes. So. And yeah, I mean, if things continue in this direction for Trots, I he could have the most games coached ever. He's at 1700 now. He's still got a long, long time to go. He's got a lot of kick left in him. I wonder. Yeah. I mean, it's, I think it's too early to start talking about who, you know, we, we kind of touched on just because it was a, it was a comment in a, an Arthur staple article on the athletic about uh, Chris Lamorello. And then Lou kind of a, um, alluded to a little bit yeah. of that as well. It's still too much too early. I'm not really concerned about much after 
this the, the free agency begins and and you know going I, I have not thought about that expansion yeah. draft and things like that um there's a lot to deal with kind of right in front of us i think all those things are are important and you have to think about them if you're thinking about the trade deadline and we can talk about that as well um i'm not worried about po- any post trots i don't know what that looks like i don't care to think about what that looks like i'm happy spoiler to alert he'll be here for a long time he's not i my fingers are crossed that he stays healthy and is yeah. able to just kind of continue to do this and that uh i really i i don't i don't worry about this but it's one of those things you don't want the game to pass them by you want their strategy to continue to work and not just be stuck like it's working right, right now really well and you suspect the honors have obviously for three seasons now really figured something out yeah um, but you don't want the game like you want him to continue to adapt um and, and make the changes as they need it to keep the honors playing competitively and play the style that he wants right um while you know again just making small adjustments so as long as that's happening i'm, I'm happy with him behind the bench absolutely uh, let's talk about the player of the week that we uh, spotlighted earlier today. Uh, as good as everyone played, and we talked about how good Bar- Barzell was last week, and and you know the team as a whole. Uh, for us, it was it was Anders Lee, the captain, uh, you know, leading the way like he has been all year. He's just been fantastic. Fourteen shots, three goals, four points, and uh, did you see his goal map that people were tweeting out the other day? Ten of twelve have come from just above the crease. Um, I think the one that was furthest away, I think it was at the top of the circle was an empty net goal, um, but he knows his role and he might be the best at it right now in the NHL. Who's better than Andrews Lee in front of the net? I, I like that. He's kind of got that swagger back a little bit. Yeah. And and that he, he's, he's more comfortable there. He, he just wasn't the same really since trots came on board. He was still scoring those goals, and it wasn't like he wasn't scoring any goals. Mm-hmm. But he's he's way more effective at it this year than he has been in, in the last two. And we we not only do we need that from the captain, and people were calling for him not to be in the first line. Looking at you, although True. if he's scoring ten goals on the third line, I don't care. But you know, it seems to be working. Um, two two kind of quick guys with Barzell and Eberle, and he, he parks himself in front of the net, power play yeah. and whatnot. He, he's putting him in. I mean, he could end he yeah. could end the season with with twenty goals, and all f- all five of those guys could score 20, 20 goals, and, and that would kind of be amazing in a regular year. Forget That's about right. a year with thirty less games. Absolutely, yeah. The thing about you know him this year, you know, and, and I said earlier today in I think at the beginning of the first period, there was a puck that was chipped into the offensive zone, and he put up this burst of speed that I I personally have never seen from Lee before. He 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 won the. He won the race to the puck. You know, it, it got deep into the zone, and, and I wasn't expecting him to win that race. And suddenly, he put the Jets on. And uh, I wrote in, you know, in the article today uh, talking about Lee. Uh, he changed his training a little bit. That that was something that I I hadn't known about Lee and, and his off season. And, and even now, whenever he's training, um, a little more conditioning, uh, a little more strength, and you can tell you could definitely tell his strength. I mean, he's always been strong, but this year it's on another level. He is not. He's not moving. It yeah. doesn't matter if Alex Ovechkin is, is trying to run into him. He is a brick house this year. He's. Uh, I, I just. I'm loving what I'm seeing from Lee. I'm happy he shut me up. I, I stay on the first line. I'm fine with it. <laughs> he's, he's, yeah, playing, he's, he's playing great. Don't change a thing. He's that physical presence. Um, I think every line kind of has their their guy. Yeah. Uh, maybe you know the second line maybe was would be Nelson, um, here and there. But um, I mean, Bavillier got, gets his body involved, so maybe he's the guy on that second line. So could be. There, there's really I mean, good Nelson. balance. Nelson, Nelson does too. I think Bavillier tries to to play a little bit heavier of a game than maybe what his stature is. But could be. Um, I, I think that the lines are really balanced, and and Lee sets the tone. I think oh, yeah. that's what that's what he offers. If he's not scoring goals, and he's also doing that, he he's got to set the tone that way. That there's yeah. effort and and all of that so yeah it, it, he's been a fire hydrant people are just running into him and falling over oh yeah it, it, in, immovable in front of the net and a couple of really great hits this year that are clean yeah was it against boston not too long ago where someone someone is right like against came, charlie mcavoy he came around the net and just bounced off of him it was yeah fantastic. And, and he he stopped skating that was the big thing right he stopped skating 
and McAvoy kind of just turned into him and flattened. And he so, didn't even move. An, Lee didn't even move an inch. Not even an inch. It was. was I've never. It was. He literally ran into a brick wall when he when yeah. he hit Lee. So it was. I've not yeah. seen that in some time. So he's his his strength. He's getting a little older. He's you yeah. know he hit thirty this year, I think, or he's getting close. So the training 30, starting yep. to change a little bit. Um, yeah. Every once in a while, he has that burst of speed, and and I yeah. think that's I think that's good. Um, he's no you know Pajot or anything or or Barzell, but um, I think to keep up with Everly and Barzell in that line, yeah, he probably need to switch up his training a little bit. Yeah, absolutely. Let's talk about the week ahead, uh, starting with tonight. Gut check win for the Islanders. Winners of six in a row, 4-0 against the Bruins, nine-game point streak. Um, and then they have the New Jersey Devils three times uh, huge. After, t- after tonight. Huge, huge, huge. Uh, Put some th- points between – more points in between. Yeah. Um, they, they need five of six. Uh, yeah. Before we talk about New Jersey real quick, I just want to quickly talk about tonight's game overall. Um, like I said, gut check win, really good win. Started really hot. Second half of that first period, they fell off. Then they played second period Islander hockey. It's never really that good. It's never really that bad. Um, and then the third period, they you know they it was a little back and forth. Um, you know nobody nobody took control of that game. It it was it, it could have went either way. And that's been these games outside of the seven two. It's, yeah. it's been these kind of playoff matches, which is good. Right. I mean, you want to see the Uns be able to compete with the team with a lot of experience like that. Right. Yeah. They're, they're putting on a hell of a performance. It's playoff style hockey um, at, you know, towards the end of that period. And, and over time, I found myself, you know, I, I try to stay subjective. Right. And then, you know, in overtime, I'm like, uh, oh, my God, these 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 right. Sorry. Objective. These two on ones get my heart racing. And I'm like, oh, no. Oh no! And then I'm like, oh yes, oh yes! And then I just, I, I just, I was a mess in OT. Me that too. Was miserable. I was a mess. I was a mess. But uh, you know, it, they're not the best in OT this year, which is which is interesting because they typically had been really good, right? They knew how to get Letty or or Barzell the puck when they needed to get them the puck to control the zone and and somehow get somebody out of position and score a goal. This year, not so much. They're zero and four in OT. Um, they win the shootout tonight, which is something they don't usually do either. So I guess we're just switching it up this year. Um, but they get to OT. They they win the game, and it, and it was a a gritty game that they had to grind out. And you know the difference between the Bruins and the Islanders right now is the Islanders have four games on them. They won four times, so. Um, that means nothing once they get to the playoffs. And if they get, you know, into a series with them, it's going to be a hell of a series. It's going to be a hell of a grind. What was the quote that you tweeted out from the Bruins head coach today? Oh, uh, that they look, the Islanders are the 20, the 2013 version of the Bruins who met the Blackhawks in the 2013 Stanley cup finals. I thought that was really telling because that was a tough team back yeah seven years yeah ago, bruce cassidy compared 2020 21 islanders to the 2013 uh 2012 2013 bruins who uh they i think they lost in seven games to the to the blackhawks um if i'm not mistaken the following year they go back and they win um but that was really really tough team that was prime chara that was prime boy chuck really hard team to play against that was you know prime crecci prime um Bergeron so it, it, it was it was a very very tough team to play against I think Nick uh David Backus was there right uh he he may have been there I can't and that, that I can't was like remember. his prime yeah I think um with it well, I think what's interesting about that comparison is that's kind of the one of the moments that or really the moment where the team started to change for the island yeah was giving the um if if you don't remember that series go back and watch the anything that you can find on the penguins islander series that year they kind of squeak into the playoffs after some back and you know years a bunch of years in the early aughts of the 2000s making the playoffs they lose in the first round um they they had this kind of ragtag team in in 2013 in that lockout shortened season and they really give the penguins a run for their money and 
I re- I see that you know I, I think fight night in 2011 was was a really good moment, but I think two years later in this playoff series, and I, I wrote this article for the hockey writers as well. Um, it, it was a really good moment for this team, and there's only yeah. a couple players left. There there aren't very many, but it turned the franchise into what we see. So that evolution over the last decade, I th- I think is um is great to see. And it's if if this is the end, you know, this is getting to the apex or the window is really opening for the Islanders and they're being compared to a team like the 2013 Bruins or in and around that area of the Bruins. That is fantastic. Yeah, that's what we want to see. Absolutely. And, and hopefully that's telling for what's to come because we know that they eventually went on to claim hockey's ultimate prize, the Stanley cup uh, three games against New Jersey this week. I don't anticipate those three to be quite as easy as the Buffalo series. Um, they haven't been. I mean, they've they've lost to yeah the Devils this year, so right? They need, there's something they need to be on their toes, right? And like I said, I I think we're talking about a completely different Islanders team than they were in the first ten games, maybe fifteen games. But um, I think they can certainly pull out another three wins against the Devils this week. Um, but I wouldn't be upset if they only took two out of three. Um, they should, I think in, in, in my opinion, they should take two out of three. New Jersey's a little bit faster. They're a little bit better coached, uh, a little more structured. Uh, plus, they have Mackenzie Wood, who uh, Blackwood, who's been fantastic for the Devils, uh, as opposed to uh, Linus Olmark and Carter Hutton, who have been good, not great for Buffalo. So we will see how that shakes out. Yeah, they, I, I think five of six would be maybe what – would be the most I I mean winning all three would be ideal but yeah I think five or six is not a, is not a bad goal and just kind of no. again creating that separation take advantage yeah. of the games in hand that that you've that you've played create more separation between you and the teams around make them play catch up um continue they I think the most important part is that they win the last two against the devils drop the first one fine whatever we sure. can move on they they don't want to lose the third game against the Devils and then go back and then they have to start playing Philadelphia and Pittsburgh and Washington and all that. So it creates create some positive momentum. Winning that third one is going to be the hardest one, um, and but that's going to be more I think the most important one. Right, absolutely. Yeah, you get New Jersey Thursday, Saturday, Sunday, followed by a week of Washington, Philly, Philly, and then the the following week is Philly. Boston, Boston, Pittsburgh. So schedule is just getting tougher. Yeah, those really by the end of that second Philly game, We're next week we'll know where this team is because the teams around them will have played a, a bunch more games and then they're squaring off against those teams. Yeah. So we'll in the next couple of weeks, we'll know. And honestly, that's kind of where... I think the the tr- the real trade deadline is it's not it's got to be two two weeks before the actual trade deadline. Oh uh, yeah. So because the the quarantine and, and this and that, if they, if they're able to even make a, some kind of deal, right? Um, and you can get my thoughts on that also on the hockey writers. Uh, I dropped that article at some point in the last few days. Um, we're both writing a lot, so it's hard to keep track of these things. Yeah. Um, a lot of mixed feelings, which is why I didn't choose a side necessarily i just kind of went through um you know whether they should or shouldn't do it and what what reasoning there is behind those thoughts and i i'm honestly torn um quick thought on the fourth periods uh report that the islanders looking for a third line scorer and they're looking towards florida for brett Connolly. what's your thought I think it's a good move. I think you pointed out the other day that Connolly played for Trotz in the 2018 Cup. Yep. And and won it. And and won it. And I think, I mean, he's a f- over a 15 goal a season guy. He was was he uh he came out of the 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 Lightning system and then to uh, the Capitals or. Um, whatever the case is, he's a speedy guy. I think if if you're not going to have Komarov in the lineup, he's really just a uh, a Dow Cole that can score goals. 
I, that's a good that, assessment. That, that's kind of that's kind of what it is. You know, as soon as Dal Cole, if if he ever gets a scoring touch back, really from mm-hmm. his junior days, you you, you kind of have a Connolly on your hands. I, I think that would be a great addition if they can get it. I don't know what his cap hit is. I, I'm not not totally up on that. I just, I think it's a good move. I think it's just if it's money in, it's money out, and that, and that's kind of yeah. where the Islanders sit. So that's where. Again, where I touch on in my article, and this is actually what one of the points I made is it's either a second line move to upgrade there to move Bailey down, or it's a straight up move to uh, to upgrade Dal Cole in the third line just for yeah. a scoring threat. And then this article came out the next day from the fourth period. Um, I'm here for that. I think that's the type of move that really makes a difference in the playoffs. I, yeah. I, I the other lines are clicking. I don't know that I would move too many things around. It's again. It was either Bailey down the lineup or switching out Dal Cole. That that's really the those are the only moves that I see. I don't see them all of a sudden acquiring a top line winger. They, 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 they don't really have the assets for it. This isn't real, in my opinion. This isn't the year for that. And Lee is scoring goals. He's the leading goal scorer yeah. on the team. Why would you rip him away? Only to switch him back. And the, Trotz did this right. He <clears throat> started trying to move guys around and. Find some different chemistry and blah blah blah, and it just didn't work. And he wound up putting everybody back. Clearly, this is working for now. Until it doesn't work, leave it alone. Yeah. Find your hole. Calm Rob Dal Cole fit for now, but we'll see in the next couple of weeks what the real needs are. Yeah. And you after were, that, they'll make the move. You were totally right. He come. He's a sixth overall pick for Tampa Bay back in the day. Uh, plays. With I, Tampa. I remember in the crunch. I feel like I saw him play up. Here. Yeah. Plays with Tampa then goes to Boston, Washington, and now Florida. The interesting thing here is his cap hit is $3.5 million a year. He's got two years left. The idea proposed was that that the uh, the the Panthers take Komarov back, and there's going to be a consolation prize, whether it's Bellows or maybe some picks, um, but he has that extra year on his contract. I like that. I don't, yeah. I don't, mind, I don't, mind, I don't mind the term... Um, of the extra year, it doesn't make anything. It makes it so that you're, you're, you're maybe not making that off season move. Yeah. So if something comes up, you're, you're kind of in it, not, yeah. not any more or less than if you had Kam- Kamarov. So maybe it's just a wash. Right. And he's, so if, you're, still... if you're able to do that, I think that's pretty good. Um, I wonder if you can even, you might lose him in the expansion draft. And that's kind of what worries maybe. me. Maybe. And you know it depends. And I expect Lou to make a good deal for the Islanders so that they don't necessarily lose anybody. But I would hate to give up. You give up Comrade. That's whatever. I would hate to. My one of my points in the article was I would hate to trade Bellows, get some guy, and then lose that guy before you traded. And and then lose him in the expansion draft. And you're like, so we just lost the asset. Yeah. In the thing we traded the asset for. And I guess we have cap space, but now we got to find some other guy. <laughs> yeah, it gets it gets dicey, gets tricky, but You're, it's uh, it's a lot of like you know, you, uh, I can't I can't think of the term, but like one thing happens and it's just like a snowball effect. And obviously, there's always yeah. going to be moves to be made. And look, maybe it, this is you know you you make those trades and you open up the cap space, and that's ultimately the prize. Where okay, so you you lost Connolly, but. Other teams are going to be moving guys around and this and that, and maybe you're able to make a trade and and plug that that third line hole anyway. Yeah. So it's 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 possible to work out. I I I, I trust Lou until I don't. Um. So we'll see what happens. And again, I think he has something up his sleeve. I don't expect the Islanders to lose. Yeah. Mayfield or something like that. You know, I, I expect I fully no. expect them to make some kind of deal. Um. What we didn't touch on is the draft possibly moving. Not from this year, but to both drafts being next year, um, and that maybe complicates things because you're kind of you might trade away a pick this year and you don't really know what you have. So then, all of a sudden next year, there's there's just more players, and it could definitely complicate things uh, as we move forward. Just something to keep in mind. Yeah, I think if I'm not mistaken, there was a little more clarity on that today uh, about the draft. Um, I don't think it's actually going to wind up moving i think they they're i think it's good i think i don't yeah. like that you're you're choosing guys or players that um that really haven't played 
all that much. Right, right. I, I, I that's kind of the point where they, I think they were trying to get at with yeah. moving it, but yeah. Yeah, I don't think they're moving it. I think they're going to still aim to have it in June. At least that was the murmurs uh, going around today via the Twitter universe. Uh, so we'll see where that goes. That'll be uh, another discussion for another time. Uh, but that's about it for today. My good friend, John, thank you to the Hockey Podcast Network, the Hockey Writers, and of course, all of you, our listeners, please rate, review, and subscribe wherever you listen to or watch the show. You can follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Nassman Hockey and find our work at the Hockey Writers. Uh, also, just a quick note, our show is now going to be uh, broadcasted on the Hockey Writers Network uh, via YouTube as well as our own YouTube. So. Uh, make sure if you really love us that you're checking out both accounts and giving us likes on on both uh, both accounts over there because we will be uh, being broadcast two different ways. Uh, you can also check out our Patreon to support the show and get access to our weekly newsletter, additional articles, and bonus content. Until next time, everybody. Let's go, Islanders.